Hey guys, I'm Brett, the Nerdy Engineer. I've heard a lot of people argue that EVs still aren't practical because while there are gas stations everywhere, there aren't that many EV chargers. Well, in this video, I'm going to try to debunk that myth. We all know there are a ton of gas stations throughout the US. Heck, there's practically one on every street corner in most cities. But let's look at the actual numbers and see how they compare. According to the data, there's anywhere from 120,000 to 170,000 gas stations in the US. It's actually surprisingly hard to get a solid number. That's a lot of gas stations, but it's actually not as many as I would have guessed. To be conservative and give gas stations an advantage, let's use the high end of 170,000 for our comparison. For the EV chargers, there's a lot of different types, but let's start off with the most famous of them, and that's Tesla's supercharger network. As of early 2018, Tesla had over 4,000 superchargers at 500 different stations or locations. For our comparison, I'm only gonna use the number of uh, locations or stations, not the number of individual stalls. And Tesla is not sitting still. Elon recently tweeted that there are thousands of superchargers in the permitting and construction phases right now. You can check out Tesla's supercharger map online to see all of the existing supercharger locations along with the future locations. All of the red icons are the existing superchargers that are already open and the gray icons are future superchargers. As you can see, over the next year or two, Tesla plans on adding a ton of superchargers. But those are just Tesla specific. Using an adapter, Teslas can also charge at the over 2,000 Chatamo stations throughout the US. Now I'm not advocating for Tesla owners to go out and buy a Chatamo adapter. Uh, they're pretty expensive and I don't have one. I've never felt like I needed one. What I would recommend is uh, go on PlugShare's website and look at the superchargers in your region and also the Chatamo chargers. And more specifically, look at them along uh, popular road trip routes that you might take and see how they compare because there could be instances where uh, the Chatamo chargers are in much more convenient locations for you compared to the superchargers you'd have to use to make those trips. So in that case, you know, it might make sense to get a Chatamo adapter, but I think for most people they can get by just fine without having one. Hmm, maybe these people are on something. These numbers really aren't looking that great so far, uh, but let's go ahead and add level two chargers. They're not as fast. You get anywhere from about 15 to 60 miles of range per hour, uh, depending on the capabilities of the charger and your car. So if you plan on being somewhere for a couple hours or more, then they work really well. For level two chargers, Tesla has what they call the destination charger program, where they'll actually install chargers for free at hotels, malls, restaurants, and other locations. It's a pretty cool program. If you represent a location like that, I would highly recommend that you contact Tesla about their destination charger program. They'll not only give you the chargers for free, but they'll also pay for the installation. Plus, you get added to Tesla's maps as a destination charger, which is free advertising and helps bring in customers. If you're a hotel, you absolutely should do it. I only stay at hotels with chargers nowadays because it makes trips so much easier. So if you're a hotel and you don't have EV chargers, then you're missing out on a lot of customers. Tesla has over 3,000 destination charger locations throughout the US. However, there's a ton of other level two chargers that I call just universal chargers. And those are the typical J1772 chargers. All Teslas come with an adapter. Those who charge at any of the J1772 chargers or the typical universal chargers. Now get this, there are over 35,000 level two chargers in the US, not including Tesla's destination chargers. There are a slew of different universal charging companies and networks. Uh, some of the ones that I'm more familiar with are ChargePoint, Brink, and EVgo. Most of these companies and charging networks have their own apps to help you find their chargers, but you can find all chargers regardless of the company or charging network by using the PlugShare app. It's how I plan my road trips and find hotels that have chargers. So now we're up to 44,000 EV chargers at over 18,000 locations. That's actually really good. Uh, much better than I was expecting, actually. Well, you might be saying, that's great, but what do I do if I want to go kind of get away from it all and go to a remote location that doesn't necessarily have EV chargers? Well, that's when you can do what the early EV pioneers did and charge an RV park or a campground. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I've actually done this. I went camping in Wyoming and actually rented an RV spot for a day so that I could charge my car using the 50 amp RV hookup. There are approximately 13,000 RV parks and campgrounds throughout the US. In order to charge at one of these 50 amp RV hookups, you'll just need your mobile charger along with your NEMA 1450 plug that comes with your mobile charger. So now we're up to a whopping 31,000 EV charging locations compared to 170,000 gas stations. 
<laughs> that's actually pretty incredible. To put in perspective, EVs only account for less than 1% of all the cars on the road in the US. When you compare the number of gasoline cars on the road versus gas stations and the number of EVs on the road versus EV charging locations, there's 18 times more EV charging locations per car than there are gas stations. That's incredible. <laughs> I was not expecting that when I did this analysis. Oh, and I forgot to mention, you can actually charge an EV from a normal wall outlet. So it's going to be slow. You're only going to get three to four miles of range per hour of charging. But if you're going to be somewhere for a couple of days, for example, if you're running a cabin or you know, visiting friends or family, you can charge up while you're there. And as long as you're there a couple of days, you can fully recharge. So anywhere that there's electricity, you can charge your car, which is pretty incredible. Tesla sells different plugs that work at different types of outlets. So if you have a particular outlet that you want to use, you can look on their website and see if they actually have a plug that works for that outlet, and it'll tell you how fast you can charge on that. Now, I know it takes longer to charge an EV than it does to pump gas, but we neglected all home chargers. And the fact is, most EVs are charged at home. So it's like having your own personal gas station in your garage, minus the smell. You're starting every day with a full tank, so you only ever really need to charge away from home when you're on a road trip. In the end, this comparison of number of gas stations to EV chargers is kind of a moot point. Most of the gas stations are there to support people's typical weekly driving habits. All those gas stations you see on every corner, those are completely useless when you're able to fill up at home. The average gasoline car visits a gas station significantly more often than an EV ever charges away from home, probably by a factor of 10 or more. Honestly, one of the best parts of owning an EV is charging at home. It's incredibly convenient. Just plug your car in when you get home. And let's be honest, nobody enjoys going to the gas station. It's always an inconvenience. They're usually dirty and they smell bad. But as this comparison shows, the EV charging infrastructure is already pretty incredible. And it's only going to keep getting better as more EVs hit the road. So what do you guys think about the current state of EV charging infrastructure? Do you guys agree that it's actually a selling point and not a negative? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm curious to hear what you have to think. Also, if you're considering buying a Model S or a Model X, then don't forget to use a referral code. You'll get free unlimited supercharging for as long as you own the car. I'll put a link to mine in the video description down below. Or if you're using an owner advisor, then you can just give them my referral code. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so you can see my future videos. And don't forget, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, as always, I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you in the next one.